I'm Dave Spalsbury, District Fisheries Biologist with Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism, stationed at Cedar Bluff Reservoir. And we are conducting our annual walleye egg collection effort here at Cedar Bluff to supply eggs for state culture processes. Um, we've been doing this since 2008 here, or 2006 here at Cedar Bluff and we've been doing it every spring and this lake is one of one of the major contributors to uh, uh, of walleye eggs for walleye culture in the state and these ultimately these eggs either come back as fry or fingerling sized fish to be stocked back into reservoirs across the state. Uh, basically what we do on a daily basis here this process usually runs for about 10 to 14 days each year and what we do on a daily basis is we have a series of trap nets and gill nets set. Um, part of the reason we do the gill nets, we, if we didn't have to, we wouldn't do them, but the, the structure of the dam, it's a real steep, rocky dam, and so we have to use gill nets because the trap nets won't fish efficiently. And then we fish the trap nets where we can to pick up males. We use both uh, females and males from Cedar Bluff here and combine the gametes to create the fertilized eggs to send to the hatchery. And what we do on a daily basis, we show up around sunrise, uh, put the boats on the water, go out, run the nets, collect the fish. And then we have a, a specialized spawning barge stationed um, on the bank here at Cedar Bluff that's the center of the egg collection operation once, once we have the fish caught. Uh, we bring the fish into the barge. We wash them off with uh, filtered lake water. And all the water that we use on the barge is filtered water uh, with a... Uh, uh, filter that is adequate to remove zebra, zebra mussel larvae so we can kind of mitigate for that potential even though we haven't confirmed or suspected uh, the establishment of zebra mussels at Cedar Bluff we definitely take steps to you know try to prevent spreading any with with uh, any of the eggs that we send out just kind of unbeknownst to us so that's one thing we do but we rinse all the fish off we rinse our gear off when we get back to the boat and then basically what we do is we start um, just with fairly gentle pressure to the abdomen of the female walleye. We just uh, squeeze eggs into the pan, into a, just a simple pan. And then we add, uh, once we have the pan fairly uh, to a level of fullness that we, that we want, we go ahead and add milk from the male to it to fertilize it. We add water. That activates activates the eggs and sperm and makes them active where fertilization can occur and we just gently stir the eggs for about two minutes with a turkey or a goose feather and then once that time's passed we add what's called fuller's earth uh, to the eggs the reason we add the fuller's earth is because in the normal setting in nature when the walleye are spawning the eggs are fertilized they fall to a, the rocky surface of the dam and they adhere to the dam and they stick and they need to do that in the wild and that's fine but for our hatchery purposes we need the eggs not to stick to each other because if they do essentially the eggs in the center of the clump will suffocate and die and fungus up and it'll kill the whole bunch so the eggs need to be able to roll freely in the hatching jars at the hatchery so we add the fuller's earth to break the adhesiveness once the eggs have been subjected to the fuller's earth for about a minute then we dump the eggs into specialized washing baskets in clean water and we wash the clay off uh, w once the fuller's earth has been washed off, then we let the eggs go through a process called water hardening where they just sit in water and they swell. And after about an hour, we package them up in coolers and send them to the house.